The Stoa is a digital campfire where we cohere in dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of what's happening now. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Stoa. I'm Peter Lindbergh, the steward of the Stoa. And the Stoa is a place for us to cohere in dialogue about what matters most at the knife's edge of this very moment. And today uh, it's one of those sessions that uh, myself and a lot of people at the store have been very excited about. This is one of those like these cool things that are that are happening around the internet called Squad Wealth, uh, and the uh, fine people from other internet are here to talk about it. Um, other internet's an applied research organization in emerging technology, and once I take in uh, 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 Sam in, uh, we'll explain what it is. Um, and we have Sam Hart here, uh, Toby Shoren, and Laura Lottie. Uh, they can wave if you can see them uh, in the Zoom screens. And how today's gonna work is I'm gonna take them in in a moment and they're gonna have a PowerPoint and they're gonna share their thoughts for about 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll pivot for a Q and A. If you have any questions, throw it in the chat, call on you, ask your question. Uh, if you don't wanna be on YouTube, because this will be on YouTube, indicate that in the chat. Uh, my internet might be a little spotty today, so uh, our backup MC is Tyson Flows. I'll take him in if uh, anything happens there. Um, so that being said, uh, everyone can unmute themselves. Yep. So I'll give Sam uh, share screen access right now, and I'll take whoever wants to talk in. Welcome to the Stoa. Thank you for having us. Um, we're very excited to be here, uh, and it's really nice to see some familiar faces from my DMs in the audience. Um, shout out to Clay Mills. Shout out to Frank Lance. Shout out Lars. Um, and shout out Laurel. I see, I see some friends here. Um, so yeah. Uh, excited to be talking to you about Squad Wealth. It's been um, maybe eight months, sub Frank, uh, since we uh, released this piece and um, some we, we've reached a lot of new conclusions. Um, maybe some of you haven't heard about uh, squad wealth, this idea that you should be thinking about as a category of thing in your mind um, before. Hey, Aaron. And um, uh, yeah, we're excited to share with you this idea and like hear some of your questions. Um, we definitely want to engage in more of like a open dialogue with everybody about, about these thoughts. Um, so I'll share a bit about what we do. Sam, I don't think I've seen, I see the presentation actually up. We see it. Excellent. This is about to be a Google Slides core aesthetic of a presentation. Um, Cores gang, what's up? So, um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain what other internet is a little bit more. Um, first of all, uh, there, we, we are um, an applied research organization and we all started out um, as people with our own intellectual practices who were basically just hanging out in a key base. And um, as we you know, shared ideas with one another, peer reviewed um, each other's papers and thoughts and um, worked on projects together, um, we noticed that like there were small sub units, um, Sam and Laura and I are one sub unit, uh, sub squad, if you will, of, of our group chat forming. Um, and uh, we've increasingly done, done a lot of work together. Um, we uh, basically work in emerging technology and media. Um, and we think a lot, the, all of us think a lot about um, new models of group coordination and work, um, like the relationships between culture, values, and economics, and organizations, um, and basically doing applied media theory for um, in, in our intellectual practice and, and with um, our, our consulting partners. Um, but we all have worms in our brain um, and have, have contextualization disease and, and um, uh, are, are trying to make a, a real a real research organization uh, out out of our work together, um, 
And we have been, we've been working in the crypto space for some time. Uh, we released a piece called Headless Brands and another piece called Market Protocol Fit that tried to describe some of the emerging models of coordination and um, a kind of or, typology of um, types of decentralized organization that we're, that we're seeing. Um, and, but when, when the pandemic hit, uh, we were already working, we were already working on some new thoughts, but when the pandemic hit, um, we became, uh, suddenly our, our whole context changed and, and we came, became very aware that there are different, um, a different dynamic was at play. Um, we were no longer as concerned with these like mass coordination styles um, because everything had suddenly been collapsed into these small interior zones. I'm sure you all remember when like the first shelter at home orders first came out, immediately you suddenly had to coordinate with the people who are just tight in your actual living space. And that involved figuring out how much, how many groceries to buy, like, um, like discussing with each other, like should people go outside um, and, and kind of group organizations formed within these like little physical enclosures. And as we were talking about this and feeling like, wow, this, this pandemic has really taken over our lives, we realized there was a, a strong isomorphism between that situation and our experience of the internet. And the, what has been called like the dark horse theory of the internet, um, which I think we some uh, debate a bit, um, whether that's an accurate framing, describes how um, people are leaving ClearNet and congregating in private spaces. Uh, so there's also a kind of process of interiorization happening on the web. Um, and uh, our group DM, our chat within our greater squad chat was just one example of this. Um, and we, we sort of see both of, as with the pandemic, which was, uh, or like the link, interior spaces and, and groups coordinating tightly together was a response to the um, the kind of danger of the outside, um, we we also saw that um, squads uh, or like a desire for like tighter group coordination and like collectivization in general in our culture at this time is is arising because of um, the overall precarity of our time. Uh, people have you know, complained about the, the gig economy for years, talked about um, the increasing precarity of, of millennial workers and uh, the, the labor models that, that have been popularized over the last 15, 10 years um, have really undermined people's agency. And there, there's a growing desire we've observed in the culture for, for forms of group agency. Um, and as we... Um, as, as we were thinking about what mo models those forms of group agency were taking, um, we saw with ourselves that group DMs were really the foundation of um, new, a new type of organizational logic that, that is emerging. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Laura and she'll tell us more about this. So as we have here, oh, can you go back some a little bit to the first slide? Thank you. I just wanted to uh, like, share a bit about this uh, quote from the piece, uh, which is uh, the founding of a new group DM is at year zero. And that's, uh, and that's because really for uh, the squad, the group DM or the group chat is uh, the space and time within which the squad lives and produces and reproduces itself. And so, um, Group chat have obviously existed for a long time, and as Toby uh, said, uh, they people started to really use them as a coordination tool, uh, uh, particularly since the pandemic. And they provide uh, the institutional memory and the shared context uh, for relations of trust to emerge and crystallize between people and friends. Um, so while ancient squads uh, or like um, all forms of coordination from cooperatives to rotating saving schemes uh, were united by the need for survival. Now it's a lot more about confronting the precarity and atomization of individual life on and offline. So squads are really expression of a digital locality because this is the essence 
um, we were saying of the of the group chat and the um, and and that really comes uh, as a antithesis uh, or as a reaction to uh, the individualized individuated logic of early social network. So uh, the uh, as, as we see from this, uh, from this visualization, this is a visualization of uh, um, Twitter subcultures uh, from uh, Menander, um, this uh, Twitter account. Uh, I don't know, per, I don't know exactly who is behind it, but this, uh, these Twitter visualizations already show that um, there are certain groups, uh, group formation um, that, uh, that are forming uh, online uh, in the clear net and in the mass uh, social media. But um, on the other hand, um, squat, squat space exists uh, beneath uh, this, uh, this fuzzy network. And squat space is really um, where these uh, inner zones uh, and these microcultures uh, um, are born uh, and, and grow, basically. And these are in discords, slacks, uh, key base, uh, like in the case of other internet or telegram. Um, and squat space uh, is uh, really where memes uh, are forged, uh, for instance. Uh, um, and this is why squat space is more than an environment, but it's really a collective bo body or, and, uh, and a shared cognition layer. Um, and, that's, uh, and so squat culture really emerges uh, within these uh, interior spaces of the internet, these local spaces. Um, and, and so this leads us to the, to the theory of the squad, uh, which are the, the five uh, key characteristic, uh, characteristics that we've individuated like uh, within, uh, uh, by being a squad and by observing other squad formations online. So first of all, uh, group boundary. As we said, uh, squad ch uh, group chats uh, provide uh, that shared context uh, for, um, a uh, bunch of people to understand themselves as a group. Um, another condition is a persistence of a communication uh, between the members of a squad. Um, then another important characteristic is the self-recognition, which is what provide a shared identity uh, within which uh, the squad and its members uh, recognize uh, um, themselves and like with each other. So the logic of the squad is very much, it's not me, but it's uh, us, it's, uh, it's a logic, it's a collective logic. Um, and uh, another characteristic uh, is the small group size. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the essay, we arbitrarily um, gave a number of 12 as the maximum size uh, of, a, of a squad. But that's more to say that uh, to maintain relations, to maintain and cultivate uh, relations of trust uh, uh, between uh, um, friends. Uh, obviously, the, the question of the scale, uh, like the, the question of uh, maintaining that level of persistent communication um, would not be able basically in like a large group. Um, and then ultimately uh, the, um, uh, the feature of co-presence, uh, co-presence and continuous availability to one another. Um, and as we'll see also uh, later, these are um, some characteristics uh, that enable squads to lower coordination costs uh, on the basis of a trust that already exists within the members and offer um, competitive alternatives to more traditional corporate uh, modes of organization. Um, so now at probably a good point to move to squad vibes. <laughs> And I pass it to Sam. Um, thanks, Laura. Uh, I don't have my notes next to me, so I'm going to wing it a little bit here. So um, vibes. Vibes are uh, what we term the, the kind of ineffable quality of the, the group DM um, or the squad. And uh, squads are really about kind of producing and reproducing vibes. And obviously this is, uh, every squad is going to, to kind of map their own idea onto to what this means, but it's just the energy of the group DM. Um, and our, our thesis is that um, it, it's, it's really about kind of production of social capital um, over, uh, over, you know, 
material wealth. It's it's about um, you know, embedding yourself in a subculture and and kind of sharing an experience and um, under your, understanding yourself kind of as part of that group. Um, and and we think this is just a really kind of powerful uh, concept that is very familiar to everyone, but um, but really deserves um, uh, acknowledging and and giving special attention to the the importance within this kind of group DM squad context. Um, you know, everybody's every squad's vibe is going to be different. Vibes change uh, day to day, um, but I think the the kind of power that a squad has, the leverage that it has, um, really is derived from from the vibe that it cultivates. Um, so here's a, a kind of heterogeneous mix of vibes that uh, that are in our our squads, a kind of adjacent region. Everything from from uh, yeah, um, kind of meme based uh, crypto economics to, um, to some of our previous writing, um, and, and various kind of like, uh, digital forms of, of, uh, kind of team production. Um, we, we've kind of subsequently talked about, um, little Kayla as like a, as a, you know, a squad or, or some kind of like, um, uh, group production output, um, yeah, for the squads, the autonomous is always collective. Um, so in order to, to really be like enabled um, and and feel like they have kind of freedom of expression, like the, it's it's about kind of leaning into the, the group identity um, and there's a form of kind of mutualism and, um, and uh, kind of right, uh, kind of rising up together um, or raising one another up that, that's really kind of key to um, to the squad kind of understanding itself as a unit and um, and for those group members to become more than the sum of their parts. Um, yeah, the core of squad production is the continuous production of the squad itself. I mean, you just want to keep the memes going. You want to keep the vibes going. Just keep it flowing. You know, um, the the squad should should just be enjoying itself and like reproducing its own identity and uh, understanding the boundaries of its own identity as it goes. Um, I mean, Toby, you made this beautiful slide. Do you do you want to say a word about this? Perhaps I'll, I'll touch on this for a moment. Um, yeah, I think we we strongly differentiate the, the squad and the squad vibes from um, the individualistic creator economy or passion economy as it's as it's been called. Um, although although the squad is is creative and is engaged with um, turning turning its vibes into into consumable units of culture um for for others um this is not uh this is not um an individualistic an individualistic mode um in fact the group not the individual is is the core unit of of um productive labor that that's uh creating these these vibes and, and sharing them out into the world um and one, one consequence of taking this view is understanding that the group, not individuals, is a, is a basic class of user. But as of yet, there are no tools that actually enable groups to have collective agency to act as, as groups um, and uh, produce share in, in the, the wealth and, and value that they create. Um, so perhaps a provocation for uh, some of the builders here might be what does it look like to truly enable group first modes of um, coordination, agency, and use in um, products and services that, that you're working on? Likewise, um, you know, 
if, if you've been following our, our work for a while, then you'll understand that um, uh, we, what, we're, what we are, are talking about with the emergence of squad culture is moving out of a time when individualism is privileged um, as a value that we hold in our culture to a time when um, communal action and um, shared vibes uh, are, are valued more so. Um, and we, we've tried to capture um, the, the different types of identity or, or ways of, of relating to the world based on your values um, that, that you hold in this, in this chart where if you value individualism and work for yourself, um, then you know, you'll, you'll be in that neoliberal mode, that hustlepreneur mode, um, working for yourself, but value and community might make you um, a, a lurker in a, in a discord, like contributing to some sort of like um, greater thing. Um, and you know, no, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be working for somebody else. I think that's, um, you know, that's the zone of the wage cuck. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's something that you can view as um, opposed to working, working for others, valuing those others. That's the mode, that's the mode of, of squad wealth, which is the, the telos of the squad. So um, squad wealth, you know, now that we've established what the squad is, you know, as a unit, as a group that, that kind of understands itself and can act together you know, what, what can the squad do? Well, the, the kind of pinnacle mode of operation of the squad is, is generating wealth. And, but what we mean by wealth is, is not necessarily like capital wealth. It's, it's um, you know, well-being and like the health of the squad and like the, the kind of energy that flows into that space. Um, there may be financial components to, you know, go on the squad vacation together to like, you know, because there's a, a shared endeavor, but that's not the main um, kind of mode of operation or modus operandi of the squad. It's, it's really just to kind of externalize um, or kind of continue generating its own culture and, um, and enjoying one another's presence. Um, here's, here's a, uh, a sampling of squad wealth techniques or, uh, or ways one might um, produce squad wealth, uh, interest-free interest P2P borrowing. Um, so if the, if the squad is really able to kind of support one another by financial means, just you know, borrowing money temporarily to like get by on a, you know, if somebody's kind of having a rough spot or, or to, to just really enable someone to, to do something that um, for themselves or for the squad. Um, anonymous lending pools, uh, collective insurance, socialized ETFs, DAO-based freelancer unions, rotating savings schemes, rev share guilds, meme venture syndicates, crypto ponzies, exit scams, in-browser miners, upstate yield farms, boy bands, cults, sovereign vacation funds. There's so many more. I mean, we want to we want this like idea to, to really be, um, you know, people to take on this idea, generate their own kind of version of squad wealth um, and, and just be creative in that kind of group production uh, mode. What squads are not? Squad is not a chat app. Um, I mean, chat apps are important and we, we really wanna kind of emphasize that this is a kind of digital native uh, you know, space that squads really thrive in, but it is not the chat app. You know, squads are, are a kind of living entity that um, happens to inhabit these spaces. Um, they're not community platforms. I mean, these are communities themselves and, and uh, entities with with real kind of agency and um, desire and and humor, um, they're not mindless swarms, uh, and they're not companies. Uh, and the objective is not to scale. I mean, like this is friends 
and um, groups that that really kind of high context um, want to be with one another and produce together, um, they may engage other squads. You know, squads love other squads, but it's not about building a company or Fortune 500. You know, monolith. It's it's about um, yeah. I mean, it, it's just about kind of expressing yourself, expressing yourself with others. And, um, and the, the way that a squad scales is by influence um, and you know, horizontal transfer rather than vertical growth. Squads don't need to scale. They spread big squad energy. This really says it all. Um, Laura, do you want to take that up? Sure. Um, yeah, so um, as somebody's been saying, the, um, a squad is not just, a, or like any group DM is not, I mean, a squad is more than a group DM and not every group uh, chat uh, is, a, is a squad. And similarly, um, Squad, squaddom is, is very much a movement. It's about new ways of being together, learning, and making meaning and making sense together in an increasingly complex world. Um, oh, yeah, I can go forward. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well, yeah, then there is this, uh, the, this meme also uh, produced by Toby. <laughs> um, that compares the individual individualized uh, virgin self-employed hustler versus uh, the the child squad that is uh, always literally vibing. <laughs> As you can all see, um, yeah, it's very and again, it's very much uh, as you can see from uh, from the meme itself. Uh, it's very much also about what type of uh, value systems are we talking about here? So on the left side, uh, um, the virgin self-employed hustler manages their entire financial life, pays uh, $2,500 for one uh, room, from one bedroom uh, flat, uh, has 8,000 followers uh, on real name on Twitter, et cetera. Whereas the Chad squad uh, is very much a different, uh, uh, a very different kind of mode. Uh, um, is a mutually, mutually supportive financial infrastructure, um, <laughs> moved a state and started a cult <laughs> also. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's very much uh, about the, uh, the group dynamic uh, that, uh, that exists uh, within small uh, trust networks. So. Um, yeah, I'll maybe say one more word about uh, one thing that you mentioned, which is uh, the, the kind of difference in value system. And the three of us are, are at least adjacent or, or work in some way in and around the, the cryptocurrency industry. And, and this, is, this is really one area of, of overlap that we think is, is really crucial that, you know, it, if crypto has done anything, it, it has uh, kind of expanded the um, the Overton window of, of what a value, you know, what is value and, and what a value system can be. And, um, and we, we really think that the, a squad uh, kind of emphasizes um, social value. Yeah, so perhaps just um, to close things out, um, some final notes on the essence of the, of the squad. Um, yeah, like Sam said, this is about redefining value. It's a shared context. Um, this is it's an it's a phenomena that's only possible after digital networks and group DMs like have become possible. Um, squads, the, it, fuck Fukuyama. It's not the end of history anymore. Like it's squads who are actually coming up with the with the futures and and enacting those futures for for thousands or, or hundreds of thousands of people. Squads are wholesome. They, they love one another. Um, squads are 
are autonomous, uh, but through community, through equity, they're fucking invincible. Let's fucking go. Next fucking slide. Squad is squads online. It's like this. It feels so good. You know, when you got the gang together, when the discord is vibing, this is this is the energy that we want you to have. Squads, Radiant they're literally squad thriving. <laughs> Radiant squad energy. <laughs> Let a thousand squads bloom. New institutions, future togetherness, squad wealth, share in the squad wealth. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to the squads. Shout out to yeah. Gil. Shout out Park House. Shout out Onion Street Squad. Uh, Vandervoot. Other internet. Worn objects. Variant fun. Trust. Wow. Soft surplus to all my squads out there. Yeah, Love all you. our squads uh aaron's dc house squad let's let's go day house squad hey i'll thank you and teal process squad bless you as well um where this this concludes our um this concludes our initial presentation um here's a here's a question this we the, think uh, might come up but this is the number one question we've gotten after we published the article so we just kind of like threw this in here um how do you find your squad? I think there's, uh, particularly after COVID, there is just, I mean, like a collect collective sense of, of kind of loss and, and disconnection from people and uh, people that, that really didn't have that group DM that, that like satisfied that, um, that social uh, you know, need that people had, like reached out to us and, and asked, um, to, to be perfectly frank, I don't think there's any specific formula to it, but, um, but uh, a screenshot one, this if it helps. One understanding, you know, what the squad is and does um, and, uh, and then kind of following your interests and, and reaching out to people is, is kind of what we suggest. Um, and we're very happy to, to talk to other squads or people looking for their squad. Yeah, big squad to squad energy. Um, we've had some fantastic squad to squad calls after after the piece too that that were like very heartwarming and um and i mean it very it kind of like broke the fourth wall for like i don't know people who we had professional relationships with were like yes this spoke to me and like i have my squad too so um we we would love to to have that same kind of uh, connection with others um, I think we're about done if we want to open it up to some questions. Yeah, Peter, right. how do we do questions here? So I will stop uh, the sharing. Um, and anyone has questions, uh, put them in the chat. I'll call on you and you can unmute yourself. Uh, we won't go in exact order. Um, but uh, Tyson, uh, our, our, one of our facilitator, Tyson Flows, he was actually thinking of doing a squad wealth speed dating event here at the STOA, and he has a, a good question. So I'm going to take him in to uh, start us off. Sure. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I love squad wealth. Um, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, that is an interesting side note is I would like to do something at the STOA or adjacent that is speed squatting. So speed dating, but finding your squad. So if any <laughs> ideas come right. up around that, would love to hear about them. Um, and I would like to see the slide again where you referenced your squads or um, other squads. So my question was, um, since releasing the article, like Toby mentioned that your theories developed a lot and you've been having these conversations with other squads. So what are some of the most interesting um, experiments that you've seen others running to build trust or to experiment with sharing? Um, and some like, yeah, some low barrier to entry or like low stakes experiments that you've seen work. I'm in a couple of groups where we're sort of like testing the waters together, having conversations and maybe like getting to the point where we could like get hired on a project, but not quite. It's kind of in this, you know, space where it's, you're not even sure who's, who's fully in or who's not. So it's kind of interesting and it's fun. Um, and then other more serious projects as well. But yeah, what have been some of those experiments you've seen others run? I'm sure we all, probably have an answer to this because um, we've all had like our own like conversations with people too as well as the squad conversations I don't know what 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 comes to mind for for you guys um, 
I mean, starting small, I think is, is good. Like something that you can achieve together. Um, there, there are, there are things that people can do and like be productive and externalize in, in, in an afternoon. Um, and, uh, one thing that I think has really helped our squad, um, just Toby, Lara and I specifically is like having a long call with each other and, and actually just kind of inhabiting that, that space, like the video chat for a while. Um, I mean, I, I know I'm pretty exhausted from, from zoom calls in general, but, um, but taking your time in, in that space and like, um, listening to one another and, and kind of working on something together. We will often like be in Google Docs or Figma or something and, and not be talking, just kind of like in the zone doing our thing. And, um, and I think that that's actually a, a really important way to, to build up rapport with someone and understand how they work. Yeah, very much agree with what Sam, uh, with what Sam was saying. I guess uh, groups of friends uh, or like uh, it's exist or, or friends are formed, uh, um, friendships are formed even uh, you know outside or like as a, as a pre-stage of a like squad formation perhaps. Um, but then um, one important aspect I guess is the, is, is the aspect of the squad tools uh, of like what uh, um, uh, what collective tools uh, do um, you know people would use together to uh, perhaps uh, create something together? And as I was saying, to be something really small. Like um, yes, we generally meet uh, weekly, which is uh, which is really nice. Uh, into um, you know giving that sense, uh, as we were saying before, of like presence, but also like continuous. Uh, um, kind of uh, work together. And then uh, there is the key base, uh, there is a notion, there is a Figma. Um, and those are the uh, spaces where we mostly uh, meet, uh, given that we also live in, um, in different countries at the moment. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess, starting small and then developing a minimal like a uh, tool set. But then also, I guess, one, one of the points that we've been making in the piece is that um, at the moment, uh, there is not actually a technical infrastructure that allows uh, um, easily like groups uh, to compound the value that they generate together. So there's uh, these aspects, or this is like the challenge uh, that I guess, uh, um, you know, we would like to see uh, or to approach or to see also approach, uh, um, you know, with like a more group based uh, kind of tooling. Yeah, not that I think we all should need to answer every question, but I, I do think that the, there's a lot to like talk about in this one. Um, uh, like, uh, I, I want to specifically also answer like what other what things have we seen other people doing like the the main um, hold on let me think about this like the main thing that I see across all of the other squads that we've talked about is that um, when people have meetings they have a Figma open or a Google Doc or a Notion open and and like somebody takes notes or like they all take notes like on that meeting. It's it feels very important to like capture the um, ideas that are generated um, and then take those ideas seriously. Um, but outside of that, we I see a lot of different things. Um, like the tiny factories, the tiny factories squad, their philosophy is you, you work between meetings and like between when you meet, like each person is excited to like bring what they did to like show the other person. Um, and their philosophy is like, it doesn't, you know, talking about things doesn't move things forward. You know, for Sam, Laura and I, we have a three hour meeting every Wednesday. And that's like when we do like the bulk of our kind of like intellectual synthesis. And that, that's when like a lot of the work gets done um, for, for our writing. Um, so I think it, you know, finding the people within your squad that like have the same working style as you and like are aligned on like an output format 
feels necessary and and like I think the squads that are doing a good job together have like aligned around that definitely um yeah 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 maybe I'll, maybe I'll pause there I have a group dm where no one in the group dm is allowed to say anything it can only be pictures and memes I, I would recommend it <laughs> All right. Um, just uh, curious, is there a hard stop at the top of the hour or could we go a little bit uh, beyond it? Yeah, just because there's, there's a lot of good questions, um, maybe 10, 15 minutes after the hour. Um, and we won't go with the questions in order. Um, and perhaps you can share the PowerPoint slides too uh, with us. We can include on the show notes or something because uh, people are asking about that. Yeah, why not? Um, I think the question, was it Taylor that had a question about the, the death and rebirth? If you can unmute yourself yes. and ask I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer this one because it's learning guidance history. Okay, so I, this is I'm not so there was a previous Slack called Learning Gardens that um, some of us were a part of, and many uh, and other people in our squad who are not here today were also a part of. Um, and I th I think that is um, that was definitely really influential in like forming the way we think. It was definitely one of my formative online experiences. And that Slack, you know, kind of like a modern discord, like it, it, it shut down at some point. Um, I think what's interesting to take from that experience and, and this, we didn't really touch on this in, in, in this talk, but um, our concept of like how squads scale or don't scale is, is relevant here. Um, like we said, this, the goal of the squad is not to become a business, like hire more employees, introduce like a bureaucracy and, and become a company. Um, we believe that squads scale laterally by seeding memes and patterns into the world that are then rep replicable to other squads. So our goal with other internet would be to generate like a viable pattern of research organization and like group collaborative tech, like social technology that other, other squads can then see themselves in and, and figure out how to, how to, to work the best way within their own groups. And I think learning gardens was a, it was too big to be properly called a squad. You're probably like a few hundred people and maybe a couple dozen people really active in that Slack, but it spawned a bunch of independent squads. Um, like our squad is one of those things that, you know, the trust, trust squad trust is like a space in, in Berlin that, um, we have a lot of social overlap with, and they um, also host visiting researchers and, and do a lot of like really important work in their co-working space. Um, there's a whole other company, like their whole design team is like excellent guidance people. That's such a strong squad as well. Um, and there, then there are other kind of like proto squads um, that like came out of that organization. And I think that what was learned, the learnings from there were, were really like, oh, wow, like organizing in a space like a key base, like a Slack is so powerful. Um, like maybe it should be more encapsulated. Maybe it should be more enclosed and protective, protected. Um, because even in, in that Slack, like the sub squads in that Slack, like produce some of the strongest vibes, like each channel really had a, its own strong identity. Um, so yeah, there, there's a little bit of like, you know, <laughs> other internet history there. Um, I hope that answers your question a little bit, Taylor. Yeah, it did. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, another part of my question was um, I had I had a squad thread for about a year that was really influential on me. Um, it was three people. We talked every day, um, basically like oversharing aspects of our life. It was a very specific vibe, but that vibe faded after a point. Um, the people in the thread kind of grew apart a little bit. And we never explicitly said this squad is dead. Um, it was just implicit by the lack of activity in the thread. Um, it's possible that a, a, an explicit conversation about how the vibes, like, let's look at the vibes here. The vibes seem to be different than they used to be. How might we, we rejuvenate these vibes might have actually saved that thread, but that's not really a conversation people are used to having or is necessarily comfortable to have. Um, so I'm curious how you guys sort of um, govern your squad and replenish its vibes over a longer time scale. Um, I mean, it's the same as kind of friends grow apart or, or you know, circumstances change, people move, you know, 
kind of put their attention in certain places. Um, I'm not not sure I would force it. You know, um, there there are kind of modes of reproduction that uh, you know you can put like a, a couple of the same people in a different group chat and just kind of reboot. Like that's that's totally possible. Um, if I don't know, I just experiment. I think um, not all squads are are made to live forever, and they cannot be forced uh, to exist either. I think, uh, but definitely, like uh, there's a uh, some uh, the vibe uh, is uh, is a crucial component, but it's also such a fragile. Uh, element uh, that they compress it so much information and uh, it's really a form of encryption in a sense uh, but it's i guess impossible to control like uh, in a, in a sense one can only cultivate it uh, but then if a squad uh, perishes perhaps it could you know see the other little squads uh, or uh yeah it's um it's a fragile precious thing, I think. <laughs> How do you think the um, a squad would be different if they anyway, were created you, with an expiration date? You, you're done. You're done with questions. We gotta take other people's I, questions too. Yeah, there's. there's <laughs> thank you, Toby. Uh, one follow up question per person. Um, uh, Clay, you had an epic question early on. If you can unmute yourself and ask it. Sorry, it's so long. Um, let me read what I wrote. I can't be responsible to remember anything I say. I think the question was like, are squads like oh, yeah, here's squads? Okay, you, you I can rephrase it, but okay. Um, yeah. Go this for it. piece claims like squad culture is the antithesis to neoliberal individualism, and to me, this piece situates itself as an answer to the neoliberal crisis um, experienced by millennials via Occupy Wall Street and the collapse of the Sanders and Corbyn campaigns. It aspires towards a more equitable capitalism or a revolution of fin capitalism. However, neoliberalism was also defined by an emphasis on community via affinity groups and voting blocks, et cetera. Why is it there's something qualitatively different about how about a squad from a community? And how does it have advantages from a community? With squads, it also seems necessary to maintain a level of secrecy from the outside world. Otherwise, as recently shown by the GameStop market flux, top-down cultural and economic nodes can capture the spontaneous in, uh, energy you and the boys release onto the world. Um, when the squad releases their energy onto the world, it can seem like it's easily captured by these like top-down nodes. For example, if Normcore with like K-hole, like releasing that and then the New York Times dabbing on that. Um, basically, I'm asking, like, are squads really pointing beyond neoliberalism? Uh, and with their insularness, are they abdicating their ability to change the world? So, first of all, the I do want to say that the piece is admittedly, you know, rife with hyperbole, and and you know, we're, there's big claims made that that were really to feel make people feel empowered and like there, there are no definitive answers um is it different than neoliberalism uh when you get right down to it i mean there there are like real similarities i don't think it is the answer um but i i think that there there's reason for hope you know um I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. It's really a great question. First of all, let me just say I'm still rereading it. It's, uh, I think, uh, um, I mean, certainly the you know the the birth of the uh, joint stock option, you know, like gr small groups of uh, investors back in the days uh, deciding, uh, you know, together. There is certainly you know this sense of affinity group. Uh, um, that is like deeply rooted in the history of capitalism and in neoliberalism. I think that the perhaps the qualitative difference uh, would be um, the squad uh, economy or squad production doesn't it not doesn't mean to be extractive. Or I guess that there is a there is a certain qualitative difference uh, there between the. Um, you know the, the forms of extraction that currently exist uh, in the uh, you know traditional or like 
capitalist neoliberalist mode of production versus what we wanted to um, you know to to point to with the um, with the theory of the squad uh, and then squad production as something and that aims to be regenerative at least uh, you know within the squad and uh, squad to squad and I guess that from the mutualistic from these mutualistic relations we see at least I personally see a hope <laughs> towards moving beyond the current system um, but yeah I agree that certainly it would need to be like a um, you know like a transition that will require like a you know certain attention and, and effort all right uh, Oliver just put it's a really fantastic good... question though and like go, go ahead Sam Go ahead, Sam. Uh, it's just, you know, one needs to ask that question in order to kind of like keep those claims in check. And and I, I think the kind of forming an alternative set of values is, is maybe the best response that, that we could give, but, you know, there needs to, you, know, you need to continuously track that and like hold yourself accountable to those different values. All right. Um, Oliver, you had a question, if you can unmute yourself. Will do, thanks, Peter. Um, so my question is, uh, on a personal level, how do you guys navigate for passion and for-profit motives when it comes to a topic like squad wealth? Um, how do you personally relate to the idea of making money and you know that relationship with the squad? And on a more conceptual level, uh, have you felt a difference when squads form to play with the possibility of making money? Uh, versus when squads form to make money with the possibility of play. So we recently took our first and second, I guess, engagement. That was like a, a joint venture um, paid. Uh, so we're, we're very new to this. Um, I think that as the essay says, like introducing money does change the dynamics of the squad. And, and I think that um, it's kind of a necessity in our culture right now to like have resources to, to, you know, do projects together and, and, and oftentimes share space together, you know, to um, like the, those are our real uh, constraints that, that should be acknowledged and, and built into that, uh, that squad culture. Um, I mean, I would say that our our objective is not to make money. It's to to have some kind of equilibrium where where we can have a, a kind of intellectual and creative output that that feels satisfying to us. One thing we did perhaps uh, that we created as a squad vacation fund out of this uh, small engagement <laughs> that we've done so far as a. A seed uh, for like uh, perhaps uh, to grow to grow some like uh, also financial possibilities to be then obviously uh, yeah you know, to be addressed and directed to the squad itself uh, altogether. Any uh, any additional thoughts before I take in the next uh, question? Okay, uh, I think it was Ryan. You had a question on wealth. Um, if you could unmute yourself and ask it. Yeah, sure. Thanks. This has been really fun. Uh, I was basically looking for just like a succinct wealth equation according to squad dynamics. And I just put in uh, wealth equals attractor force plus shared value distribution and then influence and growth. Uh, I added a couple more. Wealth equals vibe relevance. Um, and then there was this idea about externalizing the interiority of the squad to the external world for the sake of influence. And I was wondering if in there, like if artifact is essential to, to the definition of squad wealth. Um, and then I was also looking for some historical context like the Franklin Junto, et cetera. Feel free to tackle any of that or None or so. I mean, those sound like very plausible equations. Um, I this may be a cop out answer, but I do feel like it's kind of like a you know it when you see it type situation. Like you you can feel when there's like a a set of you know some suspense or like humor or energy like in that space. 
and it's going to differ, you know. Um, a friend of mine has a, a group DM that's been going for like eight years that's all about corn, just corn. And that's got a very specific vibe. But it's, been, you know, it's got longevity. Um, so there's something there. Corn as in corn on the cob. All right, next, next question. Yeah. Um, Evan. All right, so my, my question is that basically it seems like, at least in my own experience, there's some sort of like great filter that prevents most small in groups from becoming squads in the sense that you're describing. And it seems to be, have something to do with it being really difficult to have the sort of critical minimum level of commitment or buy in or mutual trust that would allow uh, just a friend group to transition to some sort of productive squad. Um, and so I wonder what your thoughts are on this dynamic and how people who are interested in being part of something like this, but who have had their own experience uh, basically being unable to actually depend on others in their groups when you know the shit hits the fan or stuff starts to involve money or whatever have you to actually learn to trust each other enough to you know sort of tie your economic futures and productive futures together in, in the way that you're doing. Mm. The great filter. Um, this is this is a good one. I think that there are more than one. the The presence of trust, as you indicate, is like a really important part of like what makes such a squad work. And like, trust doesn't really develop without some risk. So there is. I think there are multiple ways that like that can develop. Um, for Sam and Laura and I, like the we we started working together because we went to an unconference together and we were suddenly put into the position of like having to give a talk together on a topic so we just came up with headless brands on the spot and we started talking about that or brands as consensus systems and that led us to realizing like oh the three of us have some really interesting shared ideas together let's try to write up like what we put what we said in this impromptu talk and that became like our first collective output um, so that happened by accident, but I also think that, um, there are probably other ways to accomplish this. Um, I mean, I, you, I think yeah. again, starting small and like, and, and building your way up, building trust, um, not taking on like a year long project together, but just I don't know, like kind of having some fun and humor and like producing something in, in I don't know, a couple of days or something like that. There's test, test things out, um, rapid prototype, you know, um, just try Commit on to that. relationships okay. instead of projects. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a key. I'll also say one more thing. Like, I, I think there's a lot that like is going on within other internet but when I, and a lot, everybody contributes some, something different. When I, but there are certain people who definitely initiate more squad hustle energy than others. And like are really trying to make things happen are really trying to recruit other people into their like schemes and like make them group schemes. You know, I know I'm sure my friends have lost count of the amount of times I've like tried to get them to quit their jobs and like work on something weird with me. Um, and like, I, and I see that energy in some of the other squads that, that we see as well. Like the, there's like one or two people who are really like pushing, pushing for um, like, we, we got to do this thing together and like, you know, I want I want you to publish your ideas stuff like that. I think that if being willing to like be that person, but also like being loving about it and like not pushing it too far is like kind of a key, a key potential key ingredient for some for some squads to like gravitate towards like some initial outputs. And don't be discouraged if they don't work because sometimes they they just don't. It takes the right time, right energy. Cool. 
so we're at the top of the hour. Uh, let's maybe sneak in one more question. Um, Jason and John, you had similar questions, so maybe you can both unmute yourself and just ask it. Uh, Jason, if you can go first. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for writing Squad Wealth. It inspired my 20-person uh, house to write an AI to detect meme stocks last weekend. So Squad Wealth coming right up. Change shit. Let's go. <laughs> um, Please share that with us. Sure, yeah. I, I see a lot of people in the chat that live together with a lot of other people. And so I wonder about your thoughts about co-living, like moving squads offline. And I'll just uh, take in John, if he wants to add anything to that too, because he had a similar question. John yeah, Chen. I mean, I think um, similar sentiments of like co-living situations, as well as kind of looking at a lot of historical like co-ops and even um, interests from my friends who do digital work versus some people who do more physical based work and kind of seeing where that divide or kind of now looking at something like squads, my interest in a lot of digital spaces, but also how do we include people who don't necessarily have exact interests inside um, more like a uh, digital based work. Toby's the closest to living with a squad right now. So I feel like you should kick it off. Yeah, but Laura knows most about historical forms of organizing around these things. You first, uh, you first. Yeah, yeah. Well, as we, we started the piece uh, by with this, again, great meme, uh, like saying that squads have existed for thousands of years. So like part, part uh, is, uh, um, you know, be provocative, but also is in a sense, it, it's a way to... Um, to kind of say that we're not talking about something entirely new. Definitely the form that squads are taking today in like online environments is very different than, you know, more like, or like older forms of organizing. Um, we, we do mention co-ops, uh, we mention um, rotating uh, saving schemes, uh, um, Hawala, cheat funds. Uh, there's a lot of examples of uh, group uh, uh, coordination, also like uh, financially, uh, particularly from uh, known uh, uh, Western kind of societies. So there's definitely a lot of examples to look at from the past. And then thinking a bit more concrete, concretely how to um, how to apply them within this very different context that we're in today. Um, so definitely. And then, yeah, well, in the, maybe I, I, I leave the home squatting uh, to, to Toby, who's certainly um, like experience, uh, he has, has a strong, a long experience of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't had a super long experience of it, but like my pandemic co-living scenario, what did was like an extremely tight squad. I'll, I think this, and this is something Aaron Lewis would probably comment on, um, like the idea that squads are an expression of digital locality, um, I think is like really key. And like Laura said, the locality that they, the type of shared quote unquote space or a collective um, like embodiment that they express is very different than like the physical one. And I think it has different qualities. Um, like it's, it's, we don't hear that much about, um, yeah, how should I put this? Hype, hype houses as they exist today are really a post internet phenomenon. Like a hype house is not a group of people who decided to live together and then start a squad. It's an esports team that moved into a house. And, and I think that when we think about this, like, you know, when we think about what co-living as a squad is, I think you know, I feel like if, if our squad got together and like tried to live in a house for a while, it would work well because we know each other so well. We actually know a lot of like what we like and dislike because we've spent a lot of time and space together in the chat. Like, can a house of people become a squad? It's, I, that's not that clear. Um, it's because, yeah, I don't know. Sam, what are your, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I've been in a number of like, student cooperatives, artist cooperatives, things like that. Um, I guess I'll just say like, living together in physical space is, is challenging. I mean, it, and more challenging in a lot of ways than inhabiting a, a 
program together. Um, and uh, it takes like real work to manage resources when the resources are, um, yeah, I mean, are like paying rent and like things that are uh, well for, for you know, the things that you do every single day. So um, that, that not, not all people kind of fit together. Um, and also the, like we mentioned the, the kind of like back to the land movement as, you know, one, there's like echoes of this uh, in, in the piece and in what we, we see today with a lot of people being interested in moving out to the, um, the countryside together. And um, I don't think that's a panacea either. I mean, it's, uh, it can work in certain contexts. It takes a lot of like built up trust and, um, and like understanding of one another um, to, to share that, that kind of context together. All right. Um, so we got to close out soon because we have another event coming up. Uh, but before I make some closing announcements, uh, I'd just like to hand it over to uh, Toby, San, Laura for any uh, closing thoughts, anything that came alive, anything you would like to leave us with at the STOA. Is there anything um, we want to show? I mean, any squads that uh, want to chat, just ping us. Um, we're on Twitter. Uh, I guess, yeah. We, or so at other internet underscore underscore is a, is a Twitter handle that you might want to check out. Um, and we're working on some more writing. So, um, I mean, it takes us a while to, to put anything out, but um, you can expect in this area. And um, we're, we're now kind of thinking about like, uh, multi-group coordination and and like how how to produce things that are they're really like of public benefit um, in small groups any closing thoughts laura toby thank you so much for, for this uh yeah a great occasion for this amazing questions uh, and yeah it's been really fun Beautiful. Thanks for um, the questions. Sorry, we couldn't get to all of them. They they are really good. Um, thanks, Toa. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So the, the energy in this group chat, fantastic. Love to see it. <laughs> I've approved. Um, so I'll make some closing announcements in a, a moment. But uh, Toby, Sam, Laura, thank you so much for coming to the STOA and, and sharing this. I'm really digging what you're doing. Love to have you back uh, with whatever project you are uh, you're engaged with. Uh, some sim uh, a couple of events that I will plug that are kind of related. Uh, we have uh, Visakan, uh, the Twitter personalities, making friends like your life depends on it because it does. That's uh, February 25th at 12 p.m. And then Sarah Perry's coming back uh, talking about scenes. Um, so that should be fun uh, and, and related. And we have an event coming up in about 45 minutes. We have this series called Stealing the Culture with Dialogos, and this was going to be on female rivalry. So this is a uh, four people in kind of a free associative conversation. Uh, Alea, um, Maybe Gray, Ra Raven, Tarn, they're going to come. Uh, so that should be fun. And we got another one next week that Evan's going to be in on Awakening. Evan, you want to plug that that one? It's, it's going to be uh, Evan, uh, Frank Yang, if you know Frank Yang, he's pretty awesome, uh, Michael Taff, and Daniel Ingram. Um, yeah, so um, I think you pretty much summarized it, a freeform conversation surrounding a topic that's often controversial, so uh, hard to get more controversial than the topic of awakening or enlightenment or that sort of whatever spiritual ball of wax you want to want to point at that thing with. So it should be a really interesting conversation, a diversity of perspectives, a lot of different people with... Uh, different paths and influences and uh you know i'm interested is this even a thing what kind of thing is it let's find out so uh join us for that if you feel awesome and all that can be found on the stoa.ca uh everyone thank you for coming today <laughs>